What's up, ladies and gentlemen of the Ring Crew Army? Happy Valentine's Day. This is a special brand new episode of the Square Circle Podcast. I am your host, Marie Shadows. And thank you for tuning in, not only on anchor.fm forward slash Square Circle Podcast, but also on my YouTube channel, where it's finally getting updated. And this is a very special video because this whole entire week, meaning Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, February 14th through the 17th, there is apparently no English commentary for the Road to Castle attack. I do hope that Kevin Kelly is okay. Kevin Kelly is the voice of New Japan Pro Wrestling and does an amazing job by himself and or as co-commentator on the English commentary for the the matches, it helps me out a lot, but this time around, I had to watch the Japanese commentary for the Road to Castle Attack. This is night one on Valentine's Day, Sunday, February 14th, and I have about maybe four pages of notes because it's very detailed. I want to make sure that you guys can understand the match in its entirety if you guys are not going to watch the Japanese video and you guys are so used to the English one I just decided to lend a helping hand obviously for free I want to flex my commentary skills and see how well I can do and this was a challenge as much as I know wrestling and moves and knowledge and story it's a little different for writing it down and not having someone there to confirm that what you're writing on paper is exactly what's happening in the ring. So here's what's going to happen. The Square Circle podcast is still going to talk about New Japan Pro Wrestling. I have the subscription to New Japan World. You guys should definitely sign up to New Japan World. So that way, when I provide you guys with an English commentary background for this, you guys can definitely follow along and understand the match, even if you're not watching the video. So if you want to go sign up for that, it is njpwworld.com and it's only $9.99 a month, which is way better than the WWE Network. So this specific podcast episode will only cover the 10-man tag elimination style between Bullet Club and Chaos that happened at night one of the Road to Series of Castle Attack. And I always include backstage comments. But because of the time difference between New York City and Japan, over here in New York City, I have to wait to about maybe like 8 or 10 p.m. Eastern time in order to see the backstage comments of Bullet Club and Chaos, just so I could give a full review of not only the match, the backstage comments, and how this all plays into the story. Those backstage comments from Bullet Club and Chaos will come on the next episode of the Road to Castle Attack series, just because I want to make sure that everybody can have a understanding of what's happening in the match with the English commentary since they say on the website that the English commentary will come at a later date and I don't have a time frame for that and I'm not sure if Kevin Kelly if you listen to this whole entire thing feedback would be great but I don't know if you want to mention when that date will be I don't have any insider information I don't ask any of these guys any insider information at all I just want to help out the best business that I love, which is wrestling. So this is why I'm providing all New Japan Pro Wrestling fans and every other wrestling fan around the world some English commentary to this main event, just so that I could give back to the greatest sport that I love. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's begin talking about this 10-man tag. Over on the Bullet Club side, we have Jay White, Tamatanga, Tungaloa, Chase Owens, and Evil taking on Chaos members Okada, Ishii, Goto, Yoshihashi, and Yano. Just so everyone knows, Chase Owens was in quarantine for the past two weeks. So he shows up now at Castle Attack. And during those two weeks, he was in the New Japan dojo streaming away. And I tuned into his streams to keep him company and also to see if his goal of 200 subs was met jay white would be on chase owens twitch stream doing a q a and 
we've hit 200 subs and that's going to be a very interesting twitch stream whenever that happens whenever chase owens has jay white on there doing a q a now in other news chase owens has gotten what he wants he has gotten a match against yano for the kopw championship which stands for the king of pro wrestling championship Chase Owens feels that the KOPW championship title belongs to him, that he is the rightful owner and not Yano. And he discussed in a recent video the rules and stipulations for the type of match he wants against Yano when this goes down. It is going to be a Texas strap match. And it's a very important detail of what happens in this 10-man tag. So now that all members of Bullet Club and Chaos are properly introduced to the fans it becomes an all-out brawl until the referee manages to try to get the match under control and our first matchup is yano and chase chase has the strap that he wants to use for the texas strap match coming up later in the castle attack main show on saturday february 27 2021 that will be held in osaka Chase Owens has already wrapped one end of the strap around his wrist and then he does the same thing to Yano and he's automatically whipping Yano in the back, throwing some punches, beating down on Yano to make sure that he stays down. And at one point, Yano does a Manhattan drop to Chase Owens and Chase Owens is currently on the map and that allows Yano to tag three out of the four turnbuckles of the new japan pro wrestling ring however yano does not get to the fourth turnbuckle because chase pulls yano to him with the strap chase owens then decides to choke out yano and throw him over the top rope and this causes yano to hit the floor and become the first man eliminated from this 10-man tag that's right, ladies and gentlemen, the rules for this 10 man tag is not only can you get eliminated by pinfall or submission, you can go over the top rope and when both feet touch the floor, you are also eliminated that way. This is the unique concept to tag team matches. I'm guessing when it's only like 10 men in the ring at the same time. And that's a unique feature that New Japan Pro Wrestling has. I did cover a 10-man tag during the night one of the Road to the New Beginning series that included Bullet Club and Chaos. If you guys want to go check that out, head over to my anchor. But back to the match. So Chase Owens thinks that he's in the clear. He celebrates, but Yano is still on the outside. Both men are still strapped at the wrist, and Yano decides to pull Chase over the top rope, eliminating Chase. Now we have Chase Owens and Yano eliminated from this match. They are the first two to go from their respective teams. Right after that, we get another little mini brawl between both Bullet Club and Chaos. Evil manages to throw Okada into the ring, and it is Okada versus Evil. They have been feuding for a good while. Now it feels like a month that they've been feuding. I covered their feud very briefly during the other podcast episodes on the road to the new beginning, just because Okada was involved with Bullet Club in some aspect, meaning him fighting evil and then evil was paired up with the other Bullet Club members. So Okada comes in with his speed, does a drop kick to evil and then tags out to Ishii. And now we have Ishii versus evil. And there is a kick to Evil from Ishii. And then Evil has become isolated in the wrong corner. Chaos members are keeping Evil in their corner as they chop and kick him and keep their boot into his face. The Bullet Club members are trying to figure out the best way to approach this so that way Evil can get some space away from Chaos and come back over to their corner so he can tag out. But at the moment, nothing's really happening, not even there protesting. Okada, Goto, Yoshihashi managed to keep their foot in Evil's face for about longer than five seconds until the referee comes around and breaks that up. Okada is now tagged in and is the legal man. And Okada just does a simple body throw and then does a top row senton onto Evil. 
and decides to send evil into the ropes however evil decides to hang on to the ropes and this is where the gorillas of destiny tamatanga tangaloa come in to save evil and loa punches okada in the gut while tamatanga does his gun stun to okada then we have yoshi and goto come in to attack god there's a series of irish whips however Tangaloa is smart in the redirection and shoulder tackles Yoshi onto the mat. Then the Gorillas of Destiny do a double clothesline to Goto. And then in comes Jay White to pack Ishii off the apron. Evo is still attacking Okada. Jay White sends Ishii into the guardrail and uses a pole to choke out Ishii. Back in the ring, Evo tags out to Jay White. Now we have Jay White versus Okada for a little bit. Jay White has the wrist control on Okada. Jay White brings Okada down to the mat and places his knee on Okada's head while he still has wrist control. And the referee tells him to break that hold. And Jay decides to then attack Okada's hamstrings. Then Jay White tags in Tamatanga. And Tama is giving forearms to Okada's chest. Tama does a body slam to Okada, then tags in his brother Loa, so that way both of them can do the two over-the-top rope sentons onto Okada. And now that Loa is the legal man, he sends Okada into the Bullet Club corner, and he drives his shoulder into Okada's midsection. Tamatanga is holding Okada while Tanga Loa is doing the shoulder blocks. Evil then tags Loa so that way eventually Evil can do his evil abdominal stretch chain that has Dick Togo and Jay White helping out on the outside. And the referee sees this, tells Evil to break the hold and then also go and confront Dick Togo and Jay White about it. The match continues with Jay White tagging himself in. And Okada is still in the Bullet Club corner. And this is where things get dangerous whenever Bullet Club has the advantage. Jay White then drives his shoulder into Okada's midsection multiple times until he decides to do a snapmare chin lock onto Okada. And again, he stares into Ishii, taunting Ishii to come through the ropes, knowing that the referee will stop Ishii. Okada and Jay White get back up to a vertical base and Okada tries to elbow Jay. However, Jay pulls Okada down by his hair and very slyly Jay White gives Ishii the middle finger, still taunting him, still wanting him to come into the ring. Jay White then continues his focus on Okada by throwing him into the corner. However, Okada catches Jay in an attempted Alabama slam. However, Jay White escapes and runs off into the ropes in the opposite direction only to meet Okada's boot in his face. Okada finally makes a tag to Ishii. Ishii comes into the ring at full chase. Jay White sees this and immediately rolls out to the floor. No matter what, Ishii chases him. Jay White goes back into the ring. So does Ishii. And when both men get back into the ring, they start countering each other's moves. And Jay White thinks that as he throws... Ishii over the top rope. He thinks that Ishii landed on the floor, but a couple of seconds he realizes this isn't the case. So Jay White goes towards Ishii. Ishii hits him with a forearm that staggers Jay White back a little bit. And once again, there are counters by both men. And Jay White gets Ishii up into a fireman's carry. He heads over to his corner and Evil, Tamatanga, Tangaloa help out Jay White in trying to eliminate Ishii. This does not work. Yoshihashi and Goto are there to save the day. They knock down Evil and Tama. Ishii fights out of Jay White's fireman's carry into a waist control. However, Jay hits Ishii with a series of elbows and this backs Ishii up into a corner. Jay White decides to Irish whip Ishii into the other opposite corner of the ring. And this allows the momentum from that for Ishii to come back and shoulder block Jay White onto the mat. Then Ishii starts with little tiny kicks to Jay's head and then chops and forearms in the ring. The referee tries to get Ishii off of Jay, but Ishii pushes the referee away so that way Ishii can get in a full-blown attack on Jay White. 
This does allow Jay White to get back up to a vertical base and he meets Ishii and gives him a forearm, but Ishii just eats that. It does not affect him at all. Ishii then decides to throw a forearm, but in the midst of that attack, Jay White ducks down and plants Ishii with a DDT. With effective wrist control by Jay White, he does a Blade Runner onto Ishii and tries to go for the pin, but Ishii kicks out at two. Jay White still keeps that wrist control on Ishii, pulling him up and within close combat gives him knees to his midsection. And then Jay White runs into the ropes only to be caught by Ishii's power slam. Loa comes in to save Jay from Ishii's next move. Yoshi comes in and kicks Loa in the head. Tama comes in with a shoulder tackle to Yoshi and Goto comes in with a clothesline to Tama and also tries to do a clothesline to Jay White, but Jay White ducks that and pulls Goto down to the mat by his hair. Then it's back to Ishii and Jay. They start fighting for who's going to suplex who. Ishii manages to place Jay over the rope, so Jay is standing on the apron. This is dangerous territory as Jay White can be eliminated at this point. Ishii comes in with a headbutt to Jay. Jay falls back, but Loa is there to catch him. Loa places Jay back on the apron so Jay does not get eliminated. Gato decides to get on the apron and starts distracting Ishii while Loa distracts the referee. Ishii comes in with a forearm to Gato. Gato gets knocked down onto the outside. Jay White does a neck breaker to Ishii and pulls him over the top rope. So now both men are in danger of getting eliminated as they both fight on the apron. Jay White unleashes a flurry of forearms to Ishii's back to try to weaken him so he can fall over to the outside. That doesn't work. Ishii powers through that and begins to chip away at jay white's hold on the ropes to try to get jay white eliminated and then loa comes in gives a forearm to ishii sees that ishii does not budge at all decides to run the ropes to try to come back and hit him off the apron however in the midst of loa running ishii sidesteps and pulls jay white into position for Loa to accidentally hit Jay White, causing the elimination for Bullet Club. At this point, Ishii fights back against Loa. Loa automatically goes and distracts the referee. And this allows Jay White to pull Ishii down from the apron. And when the referee sees this, the referee automatically calls it an elimination. And that makes for a pissed off Ishii. Back in the ring, Loa is still there. Yoshihashi comes in with a shotgun drop kick, chops, some more kicks to the midsection, and an attempted neck breaker to Loa. Loa counters with a back elbow to Yoshi. Yoshi manages for a running neck breaker on Loa. Tamataga comes in and trips Yoshihashi. Now both Tama and Tanga are doing tag teaming moves against Yoshi. Goto comes in to try to save and both Goto and Yoshi are now taking advantage of the situation. Goto has Loa in a fireman's carry. Yoshi kicks Loa in the head only for Goto to drop Loa neck first over his knee. Yoshi and Goto try for the magic killer but Loa kicks away to give a suplex to Goto while Tama throws Yoshi over the top rope. However, Yoshihashi hangs on and gives shoulder blocks to Tama and Loa. Jado comes in and uses his kendo stick against Yoshi. This is Bullet Club trying to even the playing field. Loa knocks off Yoshi. Yoshi is now eliminated and both Tama and Loa turn their attention to Goto. It is two on one for Goto at this point. However, Goto manages to suplex Loa onto Tama Tonga and Goto gets the elimination over Loa in this match. Goto finds himself on the ring apron. Jado holds Goto's leg while Tama comes in with the gun stun and Tama has the elimination over Goto. Evil comes into the ring and kicks Okada in the back and there is a series of clothesline in the corner from Evil and Tama onto Okada. Okada is in the ropes. Tama runs towards Okada only to go up and over him and Evil runs towards Okada and this allows Okada to sidestep and Evil accidentally running into Tama causing the elimination for Bullet Club. 
Okada takes the opportunity to try to eliminate Evil at this point. However, that does not work. Evil throws some elbows to Okada and then does a thrust kick. Okada then manages a drop kick and does the money clip to Evil, hoping to get a submission win so that way Chaos can win. But a distraction happens. Dick Togo gets onto the apron. He has some words with Okada. Okada gets onto the ring apron now and is in dangerous territory and dick togo decides to choke okada for a little bit while evil distracts the referee and this allows evil to push okada off the ring apron getting the elimination over okada and this allows bullet club to pick up the victory in this 10-man tag elimination match that's right bullet club is victorious in this main event All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was the play-by-play of the main event on the first night of the Road to Castle Attack series. I hope you enjoy my play-by-play. I didn't add any story elements into this like I usually do. I usually like to do play-by-play plus breakdowns plus story inserts so that you guys can understand fully what's going on with these storylines. I understand that not everyone is a New Japan Pro Wrestling fan. I understand that people just don't get it. But if I can bring value into this sport that I truly love and breaking down this stuff and you guys can understand and get it and have a greater appreciation for it, then my job is done. However, this was just a play-by-play for the English commentary and I didn't see too many openings as to where I can include story, but just know that after the new beginning, this whole entire feud between Bullet Club and Chaos is not over. We have a ton more matches to go over in the upcoming weeks and it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm going to continue to make these videos for you guys. If you enjoy what I do, make sure to leave me a comment over on the YouTube side. That's finally getting some life back into it. And also on the podcasting side. I honestly live for moments like this, especially when we're in the middle of an amazing partnership between New Japan Pro Wrestling, All Elite Wrestling, and now even Impact Wrestling. If you guys do not know by now, Finn Juice, which is David Finley and Juice Robinson, they are heading over to Impact. It's going to be an amazing ride. So this is why I urge everybody to at least try to get the New Japan Pro Wrestling subscription so you can follow along with my assessment, other people's assessment, and even just this podcast. And then just enjoy wrestling. That's All I really want us to do is to enjoy wrestling together as a community, as a family, because at the end of the day, wrestling is a family and wrestling has been keeping me sane throughout this whole entire pandemic. One day I will be working for AEW and or New Japan Pro Wrestling with Bullet Club. I don't know, but I'm throwing my shot out there anyway. If I made it to WWE and conquered my seven year old dream by being there then I can make it anywhere in professional wrestling. If you guys enjoy this, show me some love over on the Twitter side. Follow me at Marie underscore shadows. You guys can also follow my newsletter where I talk about professional wrestling on there. I basically write professional wrestling articles. The articles I have so far is one about Jay White, Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks. If you guys want to follow me there, head over to the ring crew.substack.com. And if you just want to support the audio podcast, anchor.fm forward slash square circle podcast. If you want to subscribe to the YouTube channel, make sure to do that. Leave a comment, square circle podcast. Again, I am your host, Marie Shadows. You have been listening to an episode of the square circle podcast, and I'll see you guys on the next one.